In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the prevailing wage determination. This is the first step of the H2B process and the first official day of the April H2B cycle is today, Monday, November 1st. So here are some fresh tips. If you watched the H2B series that I put out with Trent Williams, some of this will be old hat, but some of it will be new. So see you after the bump. Welcome back to Law Great. My name is Damien DeNoble. This is the channel where I give you reliable information, help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes. Today is the first day that you can file your prevailing wage for the April 2022 cycle. Why is this important? Well, if you're filing for H2B workers and you have a seasonal or peak load need, April 1st is the first day that those workers can come in. You don't have to file your prevailing wage now, but because this is going to be by far the busiest H2B application season ever, as was this past season that just ended, as was the season before that, as was the season before that, I think it's in your interest to file as early as possible. I'm filing the entire batch of employers that's under my law firm at Frontier Tech Law today, okay? And to do that, I've prepared several things for them. I prepared uh, a list of standard, standard occupational categories or SOCs that they might file for their workers under. So you might file for, let's say, a helper carpenter. You might file for a general laborer. You might file for a helper cleaner. You might file for a cleaner. These SOC categories can be really important in determining your prevailing wage. I've then prepared a list of all the possible counties that that employer might want their people to work for in April. Maybe their contracts demand it. Maybe they have some prospective contracts that aren't signed yet, but are likely. I've gone ahead and gotten a list of all those counties because those counties are gonna to need to be included in the prevailing wage Appendix A, which is where you add the other metropolitan areas that you're working inside of, you know, during the April cycle, apart from your primary one. And most importantly, I've talked to the employer at this point to understand, do they need one type of worker? Do they need multiple types of workers? Uh, so that you know we can decide, do we need to file multiple prevailing wages, one for, for each of that kind of worker? If I'm working with staffing companies, this is the time that we're really talking about, hey, you, know, you, have, uh, you have client A, client B, client C, client A, B, and C have different workers that they need. You really need to you know, be thinking you're gonna be filing multiple prevailing wages and down the line, you need to be thinking, I'm gonna be filing multiple certifications. You know, so those are all the questions that you need to be talking about now, right? The prevailing wage really is the start of it. You need to nail it to be uh, just very successful in this process. Okay, so here's my three categories uh, of tips. Okay, the first tip has to do with understanding what type of workers you need. You might have in your head uh, a type of worker that you need for your business, but you, you might have never actually looked at the standard occupational category charts, okay? One thing you should do is you can look on the Department of Labor site for what categories of workers in your industry were successfully certified in past cycles. There's a chart, uh, you know, the Department of Labor puts out in Excel form, and one of those columns shows you the categories um, that were approved. You know, match the category, to the actual job description, to whether it was certified or not. And you can get a pretty good idea of if, if the type of worker you're looking for is a good idea to file for because it has a high success rate or it's a bad idea to file for. Maybe it's never been filed for before or it's rarely filed for and it's been denied. Okay, so that's tip number one. Know your SOC categories and check them out from prior cycles. Okay, tip number two. Understand that if you are filing for many different workers, you might have to file multiple prevailing wages. Or if you are filing for workers and it's unclear if they are general laborers, you know, in a, let's say a helper carpenter category, for example, or they're just general laborers, laborers, you might want to try to file two different prevailing wages because depending on where you are in the country, those might come back differently. You know, so if, if they're different by 30 cents per hour, well, and you have like 30 workers, well, over the course of a season, that's going to add up and save you some money, right? And then tip number three, and, and this is uh, mainly uh, something that, uh, you know, you can take care of now, you might not be able to take care of later. You should start filing now if you're thinking about the process. Um, I think prevailing wage officers are going to be swamped because this is the biggest cycle ever. And, I, and I've said in a past video, which our editor will put up here, 
uh, where Trent and I talked about the prevailing wage, why it's going to be historically large. I've also said in a video before that, which Santiago, our editor, will pull up here, um, just what has contributed to the historically large nature of the cycle. So you can check all those out. But essentially, you should file now because let's say you do make a mistake or let's say the prevailing wage comes back at a number that's just not sustainable for your business. You want to have some time to look that over and, and file it again. You know, Maybe you filed in the wrong category. Maybe you included a county that you don't need to include. And if you take that county out, uh, maybe your prevailing wage comes back lower. In any case, those are some three tips. You know, Good luck to everybody in this cycle. I know we're psyched about it here in Frontera Tech Law. And if you have any questions, my number and my email are on the screen. You can set up a free uh, H2B consultation for your business down at the Calendly link in the description. And I just wish you all the luck in this April cycle.